There are different ways in achieving depth and tonal values in printmaking. In this video, I want to experiment with a technique which uses secondary print to create a lighter tone. This print is a mixture of holography, monoprinting and some bonus material right at the end where I'm adding colour with a jelly plate. Hope you enjoy the video. So the end result is this print and this, if this sparks your imagination, I hope you will enjoy the process of making it. I'm going to first of all create a monoprint on a UPO paper and I'm going to take a imprint of some of the monoprint and I'm going to use that on my final print. This is the way I'm going to achieve a lighter tone. I'm also going to use some golden acrylic paints and I'm going to use a jelly plate to add a colour to this black and white monoprint. I'm also going to use some old holograph um, cut up plates. So if you already have some holographs uh, in your holograph treasure box, uh, you can use some old holographs or you can make new holograph um, to add to your print. If you've never made a holograph, I have lots and lots of videos on making holograph. I think over about a hundred. So please take your pick. Uh, there's loads of information on how to make holograph plates. So this video is not exactly about making holograph plate, but I will use a holograph plate. It's more about achieving depth and different tones in printmaking. So first of all, I'd like to discuss my inspiration. Uh, this is a painting I made in Portugal from a series of sketches. It's a mixed media artwork using collage, acrylics and some pastels. And I'm giving myself a challenge to recreate this as a print. Uh, it will be black and white because this video is predominantly about achieving depth and tones uh, rather than colour. Uh, but uh, I couldn't help myself to add a bit of colour at the end using a jelly plate, uh, which is the bonus material at the end of the video. So I'm starting out with a bit of black aqua ink. I've got it all mixed up with a bit of um, blending medium in a jar. So I, I've got a perfect consistency every time I need to use it. And I'm just rolling it out on a bit of acetate uh, perspex sheet I have. Um, just so I get like a um, even consistency. And then my inked up roller um, is just transferring some ink onto Yupo paper. I'm using Yupo paper here. You can use Duralla or acetate to um, transfer the ink um, and use it as a monoprint matrix. And once inked up, I'm going to use various tools. Here I've got a makeup brush, um, an old makeup brush, and I'm just using to create some brush strokes. Um, so um, the reason why I'm doing brush strokes because I kind of imagine I'm going to create a kind of sort of sky feel to my landscape. Uh, it will have elements of movement in it. Um, I want it to be a very light tone, a sort of very much of a background. Um, so this is why I'm using this method to create a light tone print. And this is the second monoprint I'm going to use to create this light tonal value. And it's more of a textural um, part of um, the print, uh, which I will use to sort of recreate the, the sea, the texture of the sea in the foreground from, from the painting I discussed in my intro. So time to print uh, my, well, how, what, do you, what should I call it? A monoprint matrix. Yeah, I would call it my monoprint matrix. Uh, so here I'm using newsprint and hmm, I made a bit of an error here because newsprint is very absorbent. And what I did is I monoprinted onto the newsprint and of course the ink got through to the other side and made my blankets dirty. So... Uh, yeah, if you do that, don't make the same mistake as me. Put some more newsprint on top to protect your blanket. Which I did with the second uh, monoprint matrix, which looks pretty cool. I really like it. 
Okay, so now is the time where I'm going to actually um, cut out a shape uh, from this monoprint matrix that I'm going to use uh, to imprint onto my print. So I printed this monoprint sheet and now I'm going to use it to make a print. Yes, I know it sounds long-winded, but I want it to have a light tone background um, textual image. That's the whole point of it. So I want it to be a lot lighter than you would achieve from a direct monoprint. So I've got my shape and I'm just going to cut it out now. So here is my wetted 300 GSM paper and then here is my monoprinted newsprint. Uh, so I've got a bit of ink but some of it will be absorbed and hopefully I am going to end up with a really interesting light tone texture. Okay, so, oh, this is really nice. Um, that would be really hard to achieve from a direct print. So I'm really quite pleased with that result. So time to do the second um, monoprint and I'm just cutting out that newsprint inked up newsprint and bear in mind I have forgotten to mention that you should really do this as soon as you've printed on the newsprint because the longer you wait obviously the sooner the print dries and you won't be able to get a pull from that so um, yeah uh, that is worth bearing in mind and here is the second monoprint looking quite cool so now that the first layer the lightest layer is done i'm going to use durala to create a much darker monoprint on top but first things first i will need i've got this durala on top so i'm not actually drawing on top of my print uh, you just can't see that I've got a film of Durala on top and I'm just using a marker to kind of get the idea of where the shapes are so I get it right with creating the monoprint shapes on top of the Durala. I'm not using Yupo paper here because very helpfully Durala is transparent so I am have a bit more control of where I put my inked up areas on the print. And these shapes that I'm drawing are again inspired by my painting that I shared with you right at the beginning. So um, I'm kind of following a design uh, but also keeping it quite loose so the actual print will be a little bit different from the painting. The painting. Okay, so now time to create um, the monoprint. So um, just rolling out a bit of ink, uh, nothing too exciting. Uh, but then I'm creating my lines using a water soluble crayon. This is a really good way of achieving marks on the Durala, which that will transfer to a wetted paper. It's also nice because it kind of creates a line on the blank Durala, but then creates a white shape on the actual inked up area which I think is quite nice. How much of it is going to transfer I'm not sure but um, uh, I'm gonna see basically. Um, then I'm going I've got a load of sort of makeup brushes and implements that I've never used um, and I'm just using them for mark making on my monoprinting it's quite cool can get some really lovely textures uh, so I'm just adding um, a, a bit of texture at the bottom and using this sort of bristle for, I think, brow shaping uh, on, on this um, makeup implement to create um, sort of brush strokes, kind of um, lighter tone, I guess. Um, so it's quite fun, this part, because I'm kind of utilising different uh, materials to create um, mark making on this monoprint. And here I'm just getting out my stencil. This stencil I made myself on the bit of Mylar sheet and I used sort of organic shapes from a sketch I made on a beach and it was like a sketch of a rock. So um, 
I printed it out and then I used it as a sort of shapes to create this really organic type of um, stencil. Um, I'm using a bit of cotton bud just to um, get rid of the ink in, in, in the stencil areas and I do really like this stencil. It's the same stencil I used uh, in my painting, hence the blue as you can see so this this is why I wanted to use the stencil again in my um, print uh, because I like that shape in the C and I wanted to use it again and it took me ages to work out what tool I can use to to create these marks in a foreground and eventually I found the perfect tool which is the back of a paintbrush um, so um, I was really pleased with how that worked out. And the rest of the monoprint is just being wiped away with a cotton bud, which is quite useful actually, just to get a lot of ink off and create some soft um, textures. All right, so it's time to put it on top of it my print and as you can see having Durala which is see-through is super advantageous because I can have a control of what what I'm doing a little bit more um, and here we go yes it's starting to take its shape I'm liking it but we need a third layer we need a darker tone and this is where the color graph is going to come to its own. So I've got bits of color graph um, I have cut up and I'm just kind of playing about where I'm going to place it on my print. And all I need to do is just now to ink it up. And again I'm just inking up with the black ink a good layer uh, rolled out. And what I do is I just um, wipe the ink off with a scrim and I do it with all the three pieces that I'm going to use for this print and this should give me a really nice crisp shark and dark image okay so before I print the color graphs I'm just spraying the paper with some fine mist so I get it I get it wet again um, it just helps getting the color graph printed on and I'm just placing it, sorry about my head, um, in the view, I'm just placing the color graph bits inked up on top, uh, which is my third darkest layer of the actual composition. All right, so time to take it through the press now. And um, as you can see, the third layer is the darkest and sort of crispiest out of all of the other two layers. And yeah, it's certainly a really good way to achieve depth. I like the different textures and layers that are going on here. And there's also lots of different ways you can achieve that, but this is just one of them. And um, of course, this could be left uh, in black and white or of course this could also be being printed in different colors um, uh, I decided to do it in black and white just so that I can demonstrate uh, just the tonal values uh, in this technique but also I can't help myself but to add some color so if you would like to see some bonus material in this video of me adding color using acrylic uh, paints and jelly plate um, stick around so I'm gonna do some jelly printing on top I have gone for these transparent golden paints and golden paints has got this really nice system where you can tell how transparent they are because you can see how um, the black lines are coming through so I've chose I've gone for these transparent colors so uh, yeah let's do it so I'm going to start with rolling out the green gold. I love that colour, it's beautiful. And just putting it in my foreground um, on the right hand side, sort of mimicking my original painting. And what I love about it is that it, because it's so transparent, we get still get the beautiful tones we've applied right at the beginning. 
And then I went for the Nicolas of Gold, uh, just at the bottom, um, to kind of blend in with the gold green. And that looks, that is very transparent as well. And the Zinc White and Phthalo Blue are both supposedly transparent, so I'm using them as well to create my foreground C. Um, and as you can see, it beautifully shows everything underneath as well. And I'm um, just adding a little bit of a lighter tone with a mask this time to the right hand side um, of the stencil mark um, just to get a little bit of variety here. So I just added white to already blue tinted jelly plate. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Really, really nice. Love those transparent golden colours. Um, and here, as you can see, I'm just using the jelly to add a bit of texture in the sky, which actually has a slight imprint of the um, colograph, uh, sorry, of the stencil. So we've got a bit of a repeating pattern here, which is really nice in the sky up there. Uh, I quite like that effect. Uh, it was a bit of a like chance kind of print, but uh, it was really cool. So I decided to stick with it. And um, here again, I've got the gold green. I'm going to just sort of blend it in with the blue a little bit. Um, it sort of nicely just tints it, um, if you like, um, because it's a transparent color. Yeah, really, really gorgeous. I love those transparencies. Really good fun. So I'm just using bits of green, gold, golden green that got left over on the plate uh, just to do little patches uh, instead of having to ink up, uh, roll the, the paint again. And that's quite nice effects as well. Uh, because it creates a really lovely texture if we just have like sort of partially um, inked up plate. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and again, I'm blending in quite with gold green, which will create me a brighter green. And I'm just going to add it to the sky here. Uh, again, mimicking the what I had already in my painting. Um, so that shows me all the sort of beautiful tones I had and textures underneath, but just sort of tints it on top. It's a really nice way to add layers and depth. And a little bit more, just a tiny splodge again, just partially kind of inked up jelly, um, lovely texture. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of that Nico Azo Gold because I really love that colour. And actually this bit, I really like how it turns out on top of the blue. It created a really gorgeous mark. Yeah, really nice. Here we go. It's finished. Well, I really do hope that uh, you enjoyed this video. Uh, please do like and subscribe uh, that always helps me with making my videos and uh, thank you so much for watching I have all my materials and in, in the description and any links you might need uh, but if you have any questions about the video please always ask me I'm always happy to help thank you for watching